So, non-monoisocentric head and neck is going to be very similar, just like in our notes. There's just italicized versions of kind of the extra things that you have to do. Now, if you will remember from last semester, a non-monoiso supraclav will have some way of actually blocking the superior edge of the field that you would normally just close down with a jaw. So, we're going to leave the field size open to indicate that it is open and we have divergence everywhere. What you have to do is exactly like we did on the monoisocentric. You're going to go in and out to the thyroid prominence. You're going to set up down to whatever your facility decides. You can have 100 SSD, 97 SSD, some other depth. I'm just going to leave this ballpark to where I had it in the first place, which gives us probably about a 97 or a 98 SSD at the clavicle at the super clavicle. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it the width so that it's out to the clavicles, down to the SSN, CR at the thyroid prominence. All the same things we did before. The last thing that you want to do, you're, well, you're going you're gonna to go out of the room, you're going to fluoro, the doctor's going to okay it, when she says it's okay, you go ahead and come back in the room after documenting everything, including the vertical, because you're not going to move this again. You've already simulated this. We can actually go ahead and film it. What we want to do before we film it is we want to add a wire. That wire is going to show where that match has to be radiographically. We can look at it all we want, but on the x-ray, DRR, whatever we're going to do, we have to have a way to show exactly where that match was, and that will come to be important later. I've already showed you a picture of what that looks like, because, but, but I'm going to show you exactly how this actually works in real life. We're going to go ahead and use this wire, and we're going to move, since we're all on just one side of this, we're just going to put it on the side that you're facing from the camera. You're going to actually run this wire right along that laser. That's going to show our match line. You want us drooping, dro drooping. You want this to go all the way to the other side. Who cares? You can't see that side anyway. But just know, our wire runs along that laser, which is our junction point between the lateral head and neck and the AP superclav. Go ahead and put your um, go three up and three over. Put your BB on there, and that's going to be your um, dose point. Now that you got your dose point on there, something I forgot from the last one that I'll cover at the end of this, at the very end of your sim, you need to go over and get an SSD and a separation there at that dose point. I forgot to say that, but I have now said it now. Is that redundant? <laughs> anyway, stay down. Now we've got our match line on there, radiographically showing exactly where that match line is going to be. Take your x-ray, get it approved. Once it's approved, document everything like we said. Come in, mark your CR, mark your, all the same stuff that you did before. Now, that wire and taking the film first is really the only difference between the mono ISO and the non mono ISO. Where the big difference comes in is when we go to the lateral. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate over and we will show you what that does. We're going to end up moving the patient completely and resetting our field size to a completely different thing. Get over to your lateral. We're going to start working on that field size in or in out. I'm actually going to go superiorly. We're going to go on in this particular case to vet the EAM. Inferiorly, our match line. Anteriorly, posterior to the lips, posteriorly to about the mastoid tip or a little bit posterior to that. Here comes my field size. We're, going, we're shooting for the same field size essentially, but our CR is going to be in a different location. So, let's do this. We're going to kind of walk it in. Now, I'm going to manually
lock this until I have it where I want it. It's kind of a crazy stair step. That's close enough. So, turn this over. You can see that we've got the inferior edge of our field in line with our, our wire. We've got our field size set about where we like it. Going to end up with our CR right there. We're not going to mark anything yet, but I don't know if this will show up perfectly here, but we've got an issue already. If our inferior divergence is such that when you look, the inferior edge of this field size is coming in at this angle. Since it's coming in at this angle, we're going to diverge into our superclav. On the contralateral side, we're going to have a hot spot. On the lateral, the, the medial, the, the side that we're closest to, we're going to potentially have a cold spot between the superclav and this juncture. So what we have to do, since our divergence is thusly, we need to go ahead and kick the table so that this angle lies with this divergence. So the table is actually going to kick feet toward the gantry. It's difficult to actually see on this exactly how that has to, has to go. I can kind of see, let me do this, I'm going to over exaggerate this. So, way posteriorly I'm matching now, but the anterior, I am not. It's not much, but we've got a couple of millimeters of divergence that we have to take care of. Yeah, go ahead. What we're really worried about, though, is the fact that we can see this, but on this contralateral side, your divergence once again, I'll kind of angle this so you can see it, is going like this. We have to have that wire matching at the same angle. So I'm going to actually move the table a couple of degrees this way. That's going to help all of this line up and align ourselves to, that looks pretty good, the opposite side. Now, I showed you a picture in class, and, and for you guys that weren't there, I've got it posted. But what happens is, radiographically, if you do not have the inferior divergence matching this wire, you will see the wire as kind of a U-shape. But when you turn the table, the wire will line up with itself and create overlap from the wire that's furthest away from you and the wire that's closest to you. So you can see, in order, you can see how my finger is looped like this. If you kick the table, it will then move the wire such that when you look at it, you're only seeing one wire instead of the U-shaped loop. So the, the way we're going to make sure that we've got the correct table kick is to go look at it on fluoro. You're going to look at the fluoroscope. You're going to see the wire. You're going to rotate the table from outside the room until that wire moves and then overlaps itself. That's when you know your inferior field edge is non-divergent versus the superior field edge of your super plow. We're going to assume that we made the correct table kick. You can look at it all you want, but you can't see through the patient and see that wire going down the opposite side of the patient. So you have to do it radiographically. Whether you take a film or look at it on fluoro, that's what you do. You have to kick the table toward the gantry so that you're matching along that inferior field edge, which is diverging out toward the feet. You want to bring the patient in like this so that that inferior field is now straight along that top edge. So, all that being said, you kick the table, matched it to the wire, you've got your field size approximately set where you want, you're going to go out in fluoro, you're going to adjust your table angle until that wire is superimposed upon itself so that it looks like one wire instead of a big U shape. Once you've got that set, call in the doctor. Let the doctor look at it, see if any adjustments need to be made. That doctor may adjust the field size, adjust the patient up down, doesn't matter. That up down is not going to matter if you've got that inferior table kick correct. 
Once the doctor says everything's cool, notate everything. Collimator, table, field size, gantry angle. Come in the room, and when you come in, you're going to mark everything because you're pretty much done with this. You're going to go ahead and I'm going to mark on the wire. That's your CR from the lateral. Actually, it's not. That's your inferior field size, field edge. I got mixed up. Here's your CR. That's your CR. That's your inferior field edge. That's a superior field edge. And you can even mark little indicators that that's where the CR runs itself. Set your dose point about a centimeter or two up from the posterior field edge, right up and along the neck. Okay, don't set it up here on the skull because there's no nodes there. Down here on the neck, take your film. Once your film is approved, you need to go to the opposite lateral. Mirror your table. However many degrees off your table is on one side, rotate the gantry to the opposite side, mirror your table so your feet go toward the gantry again, the same number of degrees. If you don't do that, you're going to over accentuate that match line and you're going to have a super hot spot and a super cold spot instead of just a little bit and a little bit. Take another film. You don't have to put another dose point on. They can do a dose point from one side. Get that film approved. Mark it up. Make sure that before you rotate over, read your SSD. Since it's not monoisocentric, we don't have all that set. We're going to read an SSD, then rotate over, take your film, read that SSD, and document that as well. So, now, we've got all our films taken. The thing that I forgot to tell you on the other film, you have to now document your dose points. Rotate all the way back over, unlock your table, and move the CR. We're gonna, I'm gonna mark this. We're gonna say your dose point was right there. Don't move your table left, right, but you're gonna move the table up, down, and in out there and there and you're going to read your SSD oh the shoulders in the way we may have to kick the table a little bit in order to have the show the SSD show up and that's fine if I table locked it's kind of a problem with old school head and neck shoulder gets in the way a lot of times Since we're kind of rotating on that pivot point, we're going to have to go and it's about 93. I can see the dash coming in. Now we also will need separation in here and then you'll have to rotate up and get your super clav dose point SSD. Do not move your table up now. Go to your dose point, read that SSD, and then if you can get a separation in here, do so. With these kinds of masks, it's, it, it's really difficult to do, but at least you have an SSD there. If you can't get a separation, call your dose imager in and have them decide what to do. It may be that you take the mask off and get a separation there at last. But we've got all the marks on the patient, we've got all of our SSDs, we've got our collimator table field size gantry, and all of that stuff documented, so if we can take the mask off now, we're just fine. So, that's a non-monoacid-centric head and neck simulation.